Hello everybody, welcome to Short Shot Archery, and today, in this video, we are doing a review on the Excel Curve RXF Chef Signature uh, Series Scope. And uh, I've been testing this out a lot, and for, well, a pretty long period of time now. I shot my entire outdoor season with it, and I shot uh, some of this indoor season so far with it, and I think uh, now is a good time for a review it was probably due for a review several months ago, but now that I've gotten around to it, uh, let me share with you uh, my experience, my thoughts, and you know things I liked and didn't like about uh, this scope, which was designed by Trueball Excel with the help of uh, Chef Vandenberg, putting in his uh, you know ideas and you know just things he likes in a, you know a sight pin. So first off, uh, one of the big things that stuck out at me is uh, the build, the you know the build quality of this sight pin. Uh, for the most part, the whole pin and the whole site, everything's made out of metal besides, I guess, two places. You've got your fiber optic, of course, that's going to be you know, fiber optic. That's not going to be metal. And the only other thing is this rheostat here, which changes uh, the light that comes into uh, your sight pin dot. Uh, that is also plastic. I think that's completely fine. But uh, the rest of it is uh, made out of metal, and it feels really strong, really sturdy. And you definitely don't have to worry about uh, you know breaking this. This is this is some tough stuff right here. So uh, very happy with uh, the quality of the design and the materials used in this design. Now I want to talk about the pin itself. Uh, the pin you see here is the .029, and it's the red pin, of course. They do make a green, and they also make a .019. Uh, I went for the .029 because I felt that size, that diameter of fiber optic would be better for both 18 and 70 meters since those are my primary distances. It does seem like it is the more popular diameter and uh, for color options it seems like people seem to differ back and forth between the red and the green. Uh, I have never had an issue with the red when it comes to looking at targets in different lighting conditions. But on the other hand, I know people that have had issues with the green, with some of the uh, lighting backgrounds, especially if they're shooting on a green field with green trees in the background. I know they're putting it onto a target ha that has no green on it, but uh, they said they felt like they would lose it, you know, they would lose their sight pin in all that green and then just the brightness of that, you know, that hot summer day. So a mixture between the environment being so green and the brightness of the sun. They felt that their green fiber optic was just drowned out by all of that, you know, environmental stuff going on. So in my experience, I would highly recommend going with the red, and you probably want to go for the 0 .029 uh, diameter because it does seem to be the more popular of the two. Uh, with that, I would have loved to be able to try out the 0 .019, but, but it is expensive trying to buy all these different products. So if you do want to support the channel, go check out Shoreshot Archery dot org and you know pick up some products if uh, you're interested maybe we'll have some t-shirts and stuff in the future for me i felt like i got a really great sight picture uh looking at 70 meters and 18 with this sight pin i didn't even bother putting in uh the supplied aperture discs now they do supply the discs though so that's uh you know not like a freebie but it's it's built into the price but it's it's a nice uh, you know, advantage to this site that you don't have to buy them aftermarket or that it actually comes with them because there is sites that don't have aperture discs. So this lets you uh, customize uh, your view through uh, the site itself by decreasing uh, what you can see through the aperture when you're aiming at the target. Uh, some of these sizes could be really beneficial for uh, say 70 meters or very beneficial for 18 or all the distances in between. I personally did not use them for either of the distances, but I did play around with them and I even shot some video that I'm going to share with you about, you know, what you can see or at least an idea of what you should see uh, when putting these uh, aperture discs into your site. So this comes with four aperture discs a one centimeter square, a three eighths inch diameter circle, a seven sixteenths diameter circle, 
and a half inch diameter circle, and of course a O-ring that's rubber that helps hold them in place. Let's go and check out what you see through the aperture. Now this is going to be a little bit different, you know, per archer, but it should at least give you a, a pretty good idea. I set this up so you can see my actual view of it. Uh, please ignore the vertical's three spots. Uh, we're only focusing on the single spot in the center of the target. And uh, as I zoom out here, the sight pin itself comes back into focus. And you can see uh, that with this sight pin, at least from my uh, perspective when I shoot the shot, it covers the black rings and you can see the blue, the red, and of course the yellow uh, rings. Now this does change a little bit at 70 meters for me. With this sight pin set up, I only see the last black ring end in. Now you could add aperture discs to that to make it smaller at 70 meters. Of, of course, we're only going to be seeing 18 meters here because of how hard it is just to line up the sight in this position at 18. It's gonna be way harder to do that at 70. It's gonna be very hard to keep everything in and out of focus properly at the 70 meter distance. So we're gonna zoom back in again, and as you can see, you know, it kind of disappears, but you, you get the, uh, the concept. Uh, if I had a better way of representing this, I would definitely pull it off. So if anybody's got any good suggestions, uh, let me know. I am now going to put in the other aperture discs so you can hopefully get a pretty good idea of uh, you know how they look. Of course, it is going to differ a little bit based on the shooter and how you know long your you know bow arm is in relation to you know where you're anchoring. Like your draw line is going to change what you see through the aperture. Uh, so these uh, these discs, these aperture discs that actually limit what you can see, could come in really handy for other shooters. I personally didn't use them, but I do want to showcase them because it is nice that they are included. All right, here is the one centimeter square uh, aperture disc. Uh, as you can see, the biggest frustration I would have with it is it's uh, it's kind of pain. it's a it's a pain to get level. Let's be honest, it is a pain to get level, especially if you're somebody that has a little bit of OCD. Uh, <laughs> it, it it could bother you. Once you get it set, it's not going to move anywhere. Uh, the O-ring that actually holds these aperture discs in place is really fantastic. Uh, it's actually a pain in the butt to get them out, so you don't have to worry about them falling out. But uh, you know, big uh, big bonus to uh, you know build quality. So let's uh, zoom out here and try to see, you know, what we're going to see. And that, that could be an issue. Um, so from all the way back here, looking on this little screen on my camera, it looks like you're basically going to see uh, red and in, maybe some blue in the corners. Uh, hopefully I can enlarge this so that you guys can see this easier than I can currently. But uh, it gives you a pretty interesting sight picture. So if somebody that's into, uh, you know, a square, then, uh, then this could be the one for you. Um, I'm sure it has uh, you know, a more particular purpose. You know, they put it in there for a reason, so it, it must be uh, you know, popular for certain uh, types of shooting. Maybe it's something that uh, Chef himself prefers for field archery. Um, I am not quite sure. Uh, me personally, I would go with just the regular uh, you know, aperture uh, discs where we're just you know, closing the circle, either making it smaller or making it bigger. Um, I'm not too much into the whole, you know, square aperture uh, thing, but, uh, you know, teach their own, and there's nothing wrong with that. Okay, here is the 3 8 diameter uh, aperture disc. Uh, really, really solid there. Really makes it nice and tight. Uh, this is probably going to be really preferred for uh, indoor shooting. And uh, we zoom out. Uh, kind of hard to tell from my perspective, but hopefully again I can enlarge this. It looks like you're basically going to see maybe a little bit of the red ring, um, probably like the 8 ring, and then you're going to see the 9 and the 10 ring, so just focusing on that, that yellow, on that gold, what you want to hit at uh, indoors. So uh, again, you know, a nice uh, diameter ring. Uh, we're going to go and uh, zoom back in here as you see it fade away. And here's a look at the 7 16th aperture disc. And as we slowly zoom out, and it comes back 
into focus. As you can hopefully see, uh, you're going to definitely see probably some or all of the red rings. So I would I would say from my perspective, uh, 7, 8, and then of course the 9 and the 10 ring. So you are cutting out uh, the blue rings. Again, this is probably another nice uh, aperture uh, diameter for indoor shooting. And uh, maybe even some like medium range outdoor shooting. If you're shooting, say, uh, 30 meters or 50 meters, uh, this could be a really uh, nice uh, ring for those two. Uh, it's just going to depend on your preference and what you want to look at. And last but certainly not least, this is the half inch aperture disc. And as we zoom out, comes into focus. And from uh, my view again, uh, it looks like you're going to go and see uh, the first blue ring. So the sixth ring and in on this disc. Uh, this disc is probably definitely more preferred for uh, long distance shooting, your, your 70 meters, uh, maybe even, you know, 60, 50 meters. Again, it's going to depend on, you know, your viewing uh, preference through, uh, you know, your sight pin, how big you want your aperture uh, to be. But uh, as you can see, there's, there's a lot of variety to uh, this uh, sight pin. So it's really great that they provide all these aperture discs so that you can go and, uh, you know, try them out for yourself without having to buy another sight pin. Another point about this uh, sight pin is that, uh, well, I decided to buy two of them. Yes, this is my backup, and I actually have one on my bow currently right down here that you guys can't see, but I own two of them because, well, I enjoyed them so much, I wanted to have a backup just in case I wanted to switch them out for different bows, or I could have one on my backup bow with, like, one setting and another one on my main bow with another setting and I, I could just interchange them so much between bows by having two. Uh, you definitely don't need two, but I'm sure uh, I'm, true, I'm sure Excel and uh, Chef would really appreciate you having more than one. <laughs> now, one of the things I did not find uh, that useful on this sight pin was uh, the rheostat itself. Uh, personally, I've never, I've never touched it until really now and just like, seeing how it worked. I always kept it on max brightness for shooting indoors and outdoors. I felt the uh, the brightness coming out of the fiber optic pin was was perfect. It, it didn't need to be adjusted. Now, uh, you know, given the fact that Chef does shoot a lot of field archery and stuff like that, from my knowledge, uh, maybe this is something that is more handy, uh, you know, during field shoots, especially since, you know, the sun isn't always in a set position because generally outdoor fields are laid out in a particular manner and I do not think field archery does you know it follows the same rules so if the sun is coming from you know right behind you maybe having the sight pin brighter or whatever be able to make adjustments based on where the sun is sitting it probably is a huge benefit but to me it was not a benefit so it's just like an added uh, you know toy to have on this site from from my experience and another point I want to make, I find this pin by Chef is actually better than the Pro version. The Pro version's a lot uh, wider, and I think it lets you adjust the uh, the pin in different angles. I, I don't find that too helpful. I know people that have it, and honestly, they're usually uh, jealous of my pin because you know I, I spent less money, and at the same point in time, it has pretty much all the adjustments and it, it works just as well, if not better. Uh, sometimes the really uh, deep uh, pins, you can get some weird like shadowing and stuff on the pin, uh, stuff that maybe maybe not that helpful when you're trying to shoot. So uh, I definitely recommend uh, this sight pin over the uh, Excel Pro version of the same pin. I think Chef's input on this really, uh, really like, put it a step up and really uh, knocked it out of the park for a quality sight pin. Well, that wraps up this review on uh, Chef Sight Pin, as I'm going to call it now. Uh, if you want to know more about it, I'll have links for uh, you know, True Ball Excel site and uh, Lancaster Archery, where I purchased both my uh, sight pins from. Uh, other than that, hopefully you enjoyed uh, this review. And uh, thanks again for watching. Please like and subscribe, and as always, happy shooting.